Our honored guest today is the famed watch designer, Mr. Gerald Genta himself. Uh, well, actually, it's the AI version of him, but still good enough. We were able to get him in here, kind of. Uh, before I start, before I bring on Mr. Genta, I'd like to announce the giveaway today. Today's giveaway is a free Batman rug from graphicrugs.com. All you have to do to enter is follow at Graphic Rugs on Instagram, comment Graphic Rugs on this video, and seven days from this video premiering, we will choose one winner and you'll get a brand new Batman rug. So, Mr. Gerald Genta himself is joining us today. Let me bring him on. Uh, good morning, Mr. Gerald Genta. How are you? Good morning, Avi. Thank you for asking. I'm always passionate and excited to talk to other watch enthusiasts and specifically about watch design, so I'm doing quite well today. Just a heads up, Wi-Fi is pretty crappy up here, so I hope you can hear me and see me just fine. You should get Elon Musk's uh, Starlink in there. Ha 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 ha. All right, Gerald, uh, again, uh, I want to thank you for joining us. And I wanted to start with my first question. My first question for you is, at what age did you start designing? My father was a skilled watchmaker, and I grew up in a family where watchmaking was part of our daily life. I began my apprenticeship in the watchmaking industry at the age of 15, which laid the foundation for my future career as a watch designer. My interest in design and creativity continued to grow, and I went on to pursue formal education in art and design. I attended the Ecole de Arts Techniques in Geneva, where I honed my skills in drawing, engraving, and other artistic disciplines. After completing my education, I embarked on a successful career as a freelance watch designer, working with various renowned watch brands and creating many iconic watch designs that are still celebrated today. Nice, I got you. And where did your design inspiration come from? I mean, is this just natural? How did this come about? I believe that inspiration can be found in everyday life, in nature, in art, in architecture, and in many other facets of the world around us. Here are some of the main areas from which I drew inspiration for my watch designs. Nature, the beauty and intricacies of nature, such as the curves of a flower petal or the patterns of a seashell, have often inspired my designs. I have been captivated by the organic shapes, textures, and colors found in nature and have incorporated these elements into my watch designs. Art and Design as an artist and designer, I have been influenced by various artistic movements and design styles, ranging from modernism to art deco, and have drawn inspiration from the works of renowned artists and designers. I have been inspired by the use of shapes, colors, and textures in art and design to create unique and visually appealing watch designs. Architecture the lines, forms, and materials used in architecture have also been a significant source of inspiration for my watch designs. I have been intrigued by the geometric shapes, structural elements, and aesthetic principles used in architecture and have incorporated them into my watch designs to create visually striking timepieces. Watchmaking tradition Being born into a family with a watchmaking background, I have been inspired by the traditional techniques, craftsmanship, and heritage of watchmaking. I have drawn from the rich history of watchmaking and incorporated elements of traditional watch designs into my own creations, while also pushing the boundaries of innovation and modernity. Personal Experiences and Observations My own personal experiences, observations, and interactions with the world have also influenced my designs. From my travels to my interactions with people and cultures, I have been inspired by the diverse and ever-changing world around me, which has informed my creative process and resulted in unique and diverse watch designs. Overall, my design inspiration is a fusion of various elements, ranging from nature to art, architecture, watchmaking tradition, and personal experiences. Out of today's most popular watch models, which one would you consider to be your favorite? It's difficult for me to pick a single favorite among today's most popular watch models as there are many exceptional timepieces out there. However, if I had to choose, I would say that the Royal Oak Offshore would be one of my favorites. This model is a modern interpretation of my original Royal Oak design, with a bolder and more sporty aesthetic. I appreciate its robust construction, distinctive octagonal bezel, and oversized proportions, which give it a commanding presence on the wrist. 
the Royal Oak Offshore represents a daring and innovative approach to luxury sports watches, and I'm always impressed by the way it pushes the boundaries of traditional watch design while staying true to the original spirit of the Royal Oak. Yeah, there's a, a lot to choose from. I appreciate your choice. Obviously, you having some, you know, something to do with that design itself. Now, what do you think about today's luxury watch prices? I mean, they're kind of astronomical, obviously, based, you know, off of, you know, inflation and all that other stuff. But even from the time that you were manufacturing or designing watches, prices have really shot up, especially the hype around watches. What are your thoughts about all this? I believe that luxury watches are not just timekeeping instruments, but also works of art and expressions of craftsmanship. They represent the culmination of years of expertise, creativity, and attention to detail, and the prices of luxury watches often reflect the value of these attributes. While it's true that the prices of some luxury watches have increased significantly over the years, I believe that they are often justified by the quality of materials, precision of the movements level of finishing, and the brand's heritage and reputation. Additionally, luxury watches often require substantial investments in research and development, as well as limited production quantities, which can further drive up the prices. That being said, I also understand that the price of luxury watches may not be accessible to everyone, and affordability can be a subjective matter. It's important for collectors and enthusiasts to carefully consider their budget and priorities when investing in a luxury timepiece. As a designer, my primary focus has always been on creating exceptional timepieces that are appreciated for their design, craftsmanship, and innovation. While price is certainly an important aspect, I believe that the true value of a luxury watch is ultimately determined by the emotional connection it brings to the wearer and the appreciation of its artistic and technical merits. I got you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we totally agree. The price of a watch depends on the wearer or the purchaser. You know, you kind of pay for what you think is worth it. Um, but obviously, from what we're seeing today and what we've seen over the last few years, people are paying a lot more for watches that may not actually be worth it, mostly for the investment purpose. They have been reselling them. So this might be a tough question. Um, I know that you did design the King Midas, so we're gonna take that one out of the equation. If you had to wear any other Rolex model, which would it be? Well, as a designer, I take pride in my own creations and have a deep appreciation for the watches that bear my name. However, if I were to choose a Rolex to wear, it would likely be the Rolex Submariner. The Submariner is a classic and timeless dive watch with a rich history and a design that has stood the test of time. Its robust construction, reliable movement, and versatile style make it a true icon in the world of horology. As a designer who appreciates functionality and durability, the Submariner's blend of form and function would definitely appeal to me. Very, very solid choice, and I definitely agree that is a great one. I personally wear a Batman on my wrist. It is my lucky watch. I could totally see you wearing a Submariner, but I'm assuming the default, default option would be the King Midas. Now, I know you don't like to talk about your competitors, but do you feel that current Rolex models are overhyped? I would like to refrain from making any negative comments about specific watch brands or models, including Rolex. As a designer, I believe that different watch models appeal to different people for various reasons, and personal taste plays a significant role in determining one's preferences. Rolex has a long-standing reputation for producing high-quality and reliable watches, with a rich history and iconic designs. The popularity of Rolex models can be attributed to various factors, including their craftsmanship, materials, durability, and brand heritage. Additionally, Rolex has a strong marketing presence and a loyal following, which can contribute to the perceived hype around their models. Very, very good answer. Very political. Um, yes, they. it is based on the user and the wear again. And people are choosing to purchase products that they feel fit them. And obviously that drives the price. Um, now, if you had to wear a watch by any other independent watchmaker, which one would you choose? There are plenty of quality watchmakers out there today to choose from. Let me know. What, what are you choosing? I deeply respect the work of my fellow independent watchmakers, 
and I appreciate the creativity and craftsmanship that goes into their timepieces. If I were to choose a watch from an independent watchmaker, it would be a difficult decision, as there are many talented artisans out there. However, if I had to pick one, I would likely choose an F.B. Jern watch. Francois Paul Jern is known for his exceptional watchmaking skills and his unique approach to horology. His watches are renowned for their technical innovation, exquisite finishing, and timeless elegance. As a designer who values innovation and attention to detail, I would be drawn to the intricate mechanics and exceptional craftsmanship of an F.B. Jern timepiece. F.B. Jern is a great and solid choice. Um, yeah, I probably would agree with you there. I don't see you as one of the guys that wears some of the crazier, you know, Erwerks or MB&Fs or anything like that. So MB&F, I, I, I could see that on your wrist. And Here's a question that I'm sure you've been asked quite a bit, and you've probably talked about it in a while, but I'd like to get your take on this. And, and directly from you, the designer, how did you come up with the design for the Royal Oak? Ah, uh, the Royal Oak. It's one of my most iconic designs, and its story is quite fascinating. You see, back in the 1970s, the watch industry was dominated by round and conservative designs. I wanted to break the mold and create something truly revolutionary. One day, while I was observing a diver's helmet, the idea struck me to incorporate its porthole-like shape into a watch case. I wanted to create a timepiece that was not only functional but also luxurious and sporty, with a bold and masculine appeal. And that's how the Royal Oak was born with its distinctive octagonal shape, exposed screws, and integrated bracelet, It was a true game-changer in the world of watch design, challenging the status quo and creating a new category of luxury sports watches. Wow. Okay. So we got a solid answer from the man himself. I'm not really sure how you were just sitting out there observing a diver's helmet, but the fact that you were inspired by seeing that and by, you know, the whole porthole design. Uh, I don't know if you watched the episode where me and Marco were laughing at the word porthole over and over and over again, but you, if you haven't, you should definitely go back to that one. That one will make you laugh. Um, so again, I just, I wanted to applaud you for being inspired and, and taking that inspiration and turning into a design that's been timeless and, and is still very much respected in the watch world, if not, you know, in the, in the entire world itself for the design. Did you... No, and I know this is a tough one, obviously, nobody actually knows what happens, but did you know or did you think that this design is going to be successful? I mean, given the fact that all other watch shapes did not match your design, that yours was very avant-garde, what did you think was going to happen when you released this? I must admit that while I had confidence in my design for the Royal Oak, I did not foresee the immense success and lasting impact it would have in the world of luxury watches. When I initially created the Royal Oak in 1972 for Audemars, it was a daring and innovative design. This unconventional design challenged traditional watchmaking norms and was considered controversial at the time. The success of the Royal Oak was a pleasant surprise to me and has left a lasting legacy in the world of luxury watches. It has been humbling and gratifying to witness the enduring popularity and recognition that the Royal Oak has garnered over the years and I am proud to have contributed to such a significant design achievement. A pleasant surprise for sure, and definitely a lasting legacy. Good job on that one. Um, What do you happen to think about today's watch designs, if you don't mind me asking? Well, I must say that I find today's watch designs to be quite intriguing and diverse. The world of horology has evolved significantly since my time, with new materials, technologies, and design trends constantly emerging. I'm impressed by the level of creativity and innovation displayed by contemporary watch designers. I see a wide range of designs, from classic and timeless styles that pay homage to traditional watchmaking, to avant-garde and cutting-edge designs that push the boundaries of what's possible in terms of form and function. I appreciate the use of unconventional materials, unique case shapes, and bold color combinations that add a fresh and modern twist to watch design. However, As a designer who values timeless elegance and functionality, I also believe that it's important to strike a balance between innovation and practicality. A well-designed watch should not only be visually appealing, but also be easy to read, comfortable to wear, and built to last. 
It's important to ensure that aesthetics do not compromise functionality and that a watch remains a reliable timekeeping instrument. Overall, I'm excited to see the continuous evolution of watch design and the creativity of today's watchmakers. It's a dynamic and ever-changing landscape that keeps the horological world vibrant and fascinating. Yes, I am excited as well. Every, I would say year, maybe every couple of years, we see something really, really inspiring and something really well done. Um, obviously, Watches and Wonders just passed by, and we saw a couple of really cool models that came out. They are keeping with your, you know, I guess your, your theory of making sure the materials are quality, making sure it's durable, making sure it's, you know, it's got that traditional watchmaking, you know, in its spirit, in its soul. Um, oh, by the way, did you hear that your brand, AKA the, the Gerald Genta brand is going to be revived by, um, La Fabrique du Temps, uh, Louis Vuitton. That's, that's, I don't know. I don't, I'm not really sure I'm pronouncing that right, but it's La Fabrique du Temps, Louis Vuitton. Yes. Bernie DM me letting me know, and I'm very excited for what's to come and appreciative of the honor. Uh, I'm happy to know that you are, in fact, in touch with uh, Mr. Arnold himself and that he uh, slid into your DMs. Let me end this you know, short interview with the final question for you. What advice would you give today's watchmakers? My advice to today's watchmakers is to embrace creativity, respect tradition, focus on wearability, tell a story, listen to customers, stay true to your vision, and never stop learning. By doing so, you can create exceptional timepieces that leave a lasting impression in the world of watchmaking. Very solid advice. I uh, definitely appreciate that, and I'm sure the watchmakers of today would appreciate that as well. I'm about to jump into a pickleball game. Is there anything else I can answer for you? No, no, no. Thank you very much for joining me today and taking time away from your vi very busy schedule um, to answer my questions. I hope you enjoy your game and the rest of eternity and stuff. It was totally my pleasure. I have plenty of free time here, so I don't mind at all. If I may give a shameless plug, please follow my brand on Instagram at Gerald Genta Official. Also, Avi, I'm a big fan of the podcast. Keep up the good work and give my best to Roman. Have a great rest of your day and please send me a graphic rug with the Royal Oak. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you again for joining in this episode. And I'd like to again thank Mr. Gerald Genta for joining me you know, in this interview and answering some of these questions. I hope you like this. This is a definitely a, a, a different type of episode. Um, not sure if everybody will like it, but if you don't, let me know in the com comments. If you do, let me know. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you're listening to the audio only, make sure to write a review for the podcast. And if you want to win a free Batman rug from graphicrugs.com, make sure to follow them at Graphic Rugs on Instagram. Comment Graphic Rugs on this video. And seven days from now, we'll choose a winner. Have a great day. We'll see you later.